This uh, talk is about RPM auto spec. Um, um, more specific, that's to uh, relieve maintainers, package maintainers from having to maintain the release fields and change log entries in their RPM spec files manually. So, okay. What's it about? So um, in RPM spec files, we have manually maintained release fields and change log entries, as I mentioned already, and we've had them since forever, almost uh, since RPM exists, which is sometime in the past 1995-ish, I think was the first um, Perl-based implementation of RPM. And since then, maintainers had to bump the release field and put in some information for context what they changed with every change to their RPM package. Meanwhile, we have a way uh, for other people to contribute uh, to RPM packages in Fedora, Fedora using pull requests. Since uh, for about four years, we have that feature with uh, this kit um, being implemented on top of Pagger. So that's a uh, that's a problem for this workflow uh, because for every change, you have to bump the release field. You have to put in a change log entry, and if everybody every contributor does that and the maintainer does it on the side, like bypassing the, the um, pull request workflow. Uh, with, with every change that gets in before you get your P, uh, pull request in, you have to update your pull requests, and resolve conflicts and stuff like that. And then uh, we, related to that, we have more or less fragile automation for mass rebuilds. Like they also have to bump the release fields and uh, put in a change log entry that this is for the mass rebuild and then build this stuff. The work I'm presenting is a continuation of the prototype work we did last year. Um, there are uh, some significant changes to what we did in the prototype that were in part requested by FESCO. And also we had a couple of things which we just didn't get around to implementing last time. So who's responsible for this? Um, first, the prototype without the work we put in there, um, we wouldn't have gotten that far this time. So. Um, other than myself, um, Pierre Chibon, um, whom many of you probably know as Pingu, and Adam Saleh, when, uh, when the team who uh, worked on that worked on the prototype. And this time around, um, we had uh, Stephen Cody, David Kerwin, and Patrick Polakovic. So, and this is for mainly maintainers. So uh, you shouldn't have to care for the release field uh, or the change log entries because that, at, especially the last information, you put it in the git commit logs already. So, and for contributors, um, this should uh, remove the friction, like what I, what I described earlier with um, with conflicts, up, having to update the pull request if uh, something else changes underneath and so on and so forth. And for the release engineers, just less hassle with mass rebuilds. You just have to put in a commit that contains uh, the right log entry and, and build it from there. So our goals for that, our objectives, uh, are like the, the way we wanted to achieve this is just to have static fields. You put in just a placeholder um, in the release field and in the change log, 
and uh, the code uh, takes care of uh, filling in the right contents there. De it determines release uh, values automatically and um, also reuses the relevant parts of uh, git commit log messages for RPM change log entries. We wanted this to be unobtrusive, uh, to have it blend in with existing technologies and workflows. Like it shouldn't get in the way. We didn't want to introduce yet another like domain specific language for this. Um, we didn't want to interfere with how git commit log messages are like uh, what's, what they uh, how they normally look like. Um, yeah, and it should be uh, easy, easy to use, easy to opt in and to opt out, like um, especially the, the opting out is also a low barrier of entry because that means you can try it out. If you don't like it, you can just revert your changes. We want to have reproducible package builds. Like we didn't want this to be something that locks in locks a maintainer or a package into using Fedora infrastructure. Um, you should take the produced SRPMs uh, and be able to rebuild them locally uh, in other build systems like uh, OpenSUSE, uh, OSPS. Um, and uh, you need, uh, as a maintainer, you need to have the ability to fix things later. Like um, I can't count, count how often I forgot to um, update, uh, like to, to upload the, the source tarball to, to the look inside cache and had to uh, um, check the, co commit that change later. And um, this is something I don't want to end up in an in a RPM change log. So there needs to be a way to, uh, to um, like put a little polish on, on, on the change log if the need arises. So the final thing, what, uh, what, we, what we did is mainly a Koji plugin like that lives on the, on the Koji builders. It pre-processes the spec files and uh, fills in the right uh, the right content uh, where the where the placeholders are before building the srpm which is then built into installable packages it's also a command line tool um, you can uh, uh, if you have it installed you can run rpm auto spec say generate change log um, and point it to a spec file um, and it will up, uh, will generate the change log directly on, uh, like in, in your terminal, so you can see what it would do if you were were to build your package right now. It's also a Python package, um, which is basically uh, like that's where all the action happens, and that allows us to uh, to have others uh, use the functionality. Um, integrated with uh, tools like FET package or with RPM dev bump spec. So yeah, look at, look, looking back when we talked about, uh, when I talked about uh, release engineering, they can use RPM dev bump spec all, all across the board. And in the case of a package that uses these features, it will simply just, um, I think it will prepare the commit. I'm not quite sure what it does. It We'll leave the spec file alone. That's uh, that's the main thing here. All right, changes since the prototype. Um, we greatly simplified the re release calculation algorithm. Previously, uh, in, in the prototype, we tried to emulate what a maintainer would do or what we in the team thought a maintainer normally does. And for that, we had to like keep track of uh, from which commits uh, packages were built. We stored them in Git tags and 
Fasco didn't like that too much, so they asked us to use a more simple algorithm, which simply counts the number of commits since the last time the version was changed in the package. We, with that, we lose the ability to have multiple builds from this from a single commit. So if you do one build and you want to do another without doing any changes, just maybe say rebuild that thing against the new library or doing a mass rebuild in the case of release engineering, you have to add another empty commit. It gained uh, some functionality we did, just didn't get around to last time. So uh, it works to complete a series, including uh, merge, merge brand, uh, merges of different branches. It will, uh, like in the, in the case of merges, I, mm, no, let, let me talk about that later. And the most important thing, it's deployed in Koji since uh, uh, since mid, mid of June this year. Uh, so you can use it right now for your for your packages. So to um, to stop having to maintain uh, maintain the release field, um, just put the auto release macro in it. Um, that will do it for the for the most common cases. If you need to have uh, like uh, if you need to package pre-releases or snapshot releases, and you don't use the, I think that was using caray and tilde characters in the version field. Like if you do it the old way, there are flags for this too. It will include the 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 disk tag so having just a line that says release, auto release, uh, that will, that'll be enough. As I mentioned, it counts the numbers, a number of commits since the last time the version field was bumped. And, oh, and in the case of merges, uh, like it takes the branch that has the highest value. Like if you uh, merge two branches, one, uh, one has three changes, one has five, the release, uh, val uh, release field gets a, va a value of five. And the simplified algorithm uh, that affects a clean upgrade path between Fedora releases, that was something we cared about a lot in the past, but uh, not so much today because uh, upgrades nowadays do the equ equivalent of DNF distro sync which doesn't care about whether a package gets up or downgraded when doing the upgrade. So for ch change log entries, um, it just use the, the, the percent auto change log macro in the change log blog. Um, and uh, individual RPM change log entries are generated from the log subject lines and uh, who did the commit and at, uh, at what time. Like uh, if, you're, if you're not familiar with uh, git commit logs, like their usual structures, you have, a, you have a single line that describes the change and then you have a, uh, that's the so-called subject. And then you have a body where you can go into detail also into reasons why you did something and also uh stuff like uh this fixes that bug or um like signed off bylines who worked on on the change also you can override this in a change log file that's the way you fix things if if they they go uh, if you notice something went wrong in the past so you simply uh, dump the gener generated change log into that file. Do you, do the like do do the fixes, commit that, and uh, then it will take these contents from then on. We're also um, mentioning uh, like so far we only use the uh, the subject lines. Um, 
we know there's a there's a demand for for being able to specify longer RPM change rule entries, but we are still hashing that out. And uh, for change log entries, because you can't really know uh, what content, what changes were relevant, like you can't programmatically find that out really. Um, uh, the the only way, the, the the only situation where we support that fully is if one branch uh, like wins and the other the content of the other branch is simply um, discarded. That's uh, the that's the the, th the case if you use the 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 hour strategy for merging, which simply does a uh, bookkeeping merge commit and takes the whole uh, contents of one branch and discards the rest. And in the case of normal, normal real merges where you might have resolved conflicts between the two branches and stuff like that, like when it can't, can't find out on its own what the changes are, it will it will put in uh, uh, a message saying that it can't resolve this merge, so you can fix it uh, manually. Okay, what's next? I mentioned longer change log entries. Um, there are a couple of uh, approaches to this. There's some discussion in 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 an open issue about that. Uh, I want to uh, do it in a way that the git commit log messages that, that they still look natural in some way, like that they look like any other git commit log message, that we don't have to invent invent something that goes against normal git workflows. Um, and the next thing is uh, a way to uh, preemptively say, oh, dis disregard this commit for the change log. Like, um, I forgot to upload the table or something like that. That's not relevant for for the RPM change log. That you can do it right away instead of having to patch things later. And also, we want to accommodate uh, downstream users of that. That would be uh, like the um, Neil Gomper um, does some integration with like with OSBS like um, to, to rebuild packages from Fedora there and they have some different uh, requirements uh, with regards to version and release fields in, in the change log. So uh, we want to um, accommodate them with that. All right, I'm, I'm done here so um, you can find further information at the project repository on the uh, at the URL you see here same with uh, documentation there's much more information inside there and you can also look at these slides if you haven't had enough of them already um, there on um, like the um, the repository where 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 these live, the, the source of these slides is on Pagger as well. So are there any questions? Maybe they have bubbled up because I only looked at the speaker view of this. Let me see. There are questions. Could you show us an example of how to use it? Of course, I'm happy to do that. Let me just unshare my slides. All right, I'll go to we have a demo in, in the source code. And um, that's yeah. so this is how you enable automatic release numbering and this is how you uh, enable the automatic uh, automatic change log entry generation. It's really super simple. Let me run through um, to uh, generating the the like the the real spec file that then gets passed to Koji for building. Um, um, Windows, sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Um,
Ah, okay. I'm in the wrong place. So, dropping the top folder of the project. Um, oh, ah, I'm not using the right one. Process. Just do it. So this is what happens to the spec file before Koji gets to uh, anything from it. Puts in, find the auto release macro, sets the release number to 11 because that's the number of commits since the last time the version was changed in, in this particular um, project. And it fills in the whole change log of the file. That's all it does. <laughs> so, any other questions? Oh, okay, let me go from, start from the bottom. I have Fedora packages that RH people apparently pull into RHEL. Can I use RPM autospec or will it cause problems for them? Um, it depends on on how that depends on how they consume it. I imagine they will want to um, have a clone of the of the Git repository and build from there. They would have to uh, have some enablement in in uh, in the building infrastructure in Red Hat, but that shouldn't be a huge problem. Um, the internal system we use there also based on Koji. The only hot, really hard requirement we have uh, is it needs to uh, the Python version needs to be three point six or later. So our uh, in, in internal systems may need up updating. I don't know. I haven't looked into them in quite a long while. What are the CLI commands? Uh, let me share the screen again, because that's uh, the terminal again, because it's much easier to simply run it. We have generate change log. It just, I mean, um, does the things and dumps the change log on on the uh, on standard out, and also same thing with calculate release. Just do the release number. There's not much more. We uh, we have some ideas. I forgot that in the slides. How could that happen? I don't know. Um, to uh, like to uh, automatically convert a package to using uh, auto release and auto change log. Um, also to freeze uh, the like to generate the change log and freeze it into the change log files for editing. Um, this is all stuff you can do manually using two or three commands or your text editor. Um, but it would be very convenient if, if you could do that in one go. Okay, I you did not get the snapshot remark. Do tilde RC1 and curry devil work and how? Uh, yes, they do work. Um, you just wouldn't use the 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 flags for the for the legacy legacy way to encode snapshot versions into the release field. RPM or spec largely doesn't care about the 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 version contents. It just cares about did it change. We don't really look at what's in the in the version field other than comparing it with the version of a previous commit. And Matt, you're you're asking the 
the interesting question. When are we going to make this mandatory for new packages and mandatory for existing packages? I mean, um, yeah, I wouldn't be against it. I think it's solid. Let's give it some time to uh, prove itself in the field. And then it's, it's a policy question. Like, um, when are we going to tell people you have to do it this way? I don't, I don't really know. Um, for, for me and for the release engineering folks, probably rather sooner than later. I mean, but I'm biased here. Okay. Um, if there aren't any other questions, we're almost out of time. How many packages are using it already? Uh, I don't know exactly. I have converted one of mine. We will be eating our dog. We, we don't yet, but we will be eating our dog food on that soon. Um, another unrelated package of mine uses it. I have feedback from a couple people. I think Git Cola uses it. That's... Uh, one instance like where we just discovered a bug with merges which will be deployed soon uh, so if you use that and you notice that the source rpm generation takes forever i mean that literally and until code gt is restarted or something uh, then you've run into that bug but we have the fix it's in uh, it's released already we just need to deploy it but i don't want to bother kevin with it on the weekend anyway uh... <laughs> yeah all right I don't, I'm missing some context with fat package mock build error. Changelog entries must start with a star. This is odd. I haven't seen it already, but uh, please um, tell me more about it. Maybe not, uh, not right here because we're out of time. But uh, just point me to uh, the package or the repository where it's happening. All right. The Koji plugin is separate from Koji. Yes. Like um, you can run a Koji without it. It's not part of the, of the um, Koji core code base. It's a separate plugin, which you have to install and um, configure your code GD process for it. All right. Oh, that solved itself. That's nice. I like, I like these. <laughs> Didn't have to do anything. They're my favorites. Okay. Um, it's the top of the hour. Um, Thanks so much for attending. Um, I'll stick around in the general general chat and uh, probably the um, the museum map or something. So if you want to hit me up there or on IRC later on IRC, I'm regularly there when I'm at least when I'm working. So thanks again and uh, have a good rest of the conference, folks. Bye-bye.